Hi, I'm Iris Fritz. I'm with the Elfman Student Success Center at Dunwoody College of Technology. And I'm here today to talk to you about the relationship of Ohm's Law in a series circuit and in a parallel circuit. Okay, now I want to look at a parallel circuit. And a parallel circuit, of course, because it's wired, you saw that there is a difference. That now each resistor is offered the same voltage potential. So what I want to do, though, is keep exercising the ability to redraw, even though with this simple two resistive network, this two resistor network within the parallel circuit doesn't really require us to do a redraw, and you'll get very comfortable with it. It's a good exercise, and so I want to keep exercising you because pretty soon we'll be working with combination circuits, and they require you to have some of these skills in place. So if I'm looking at this, and if you remember what we were doing before, we were keeping track of information that was given, and we're going to be doing that shortly. You have something that has two resistors, and they are indeed wired in parallel. Now let's talk about some of what we know and understand regarding parallel circuits. We know that the voltage potential offered to these two resistors is the same. And I'm just going to again bend my wires. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to redraw. So if I do that, and I'm just going to stand in the middle here so you can watch me. Here I am. All the electrons leave the source. And what do you see here? A split. So here's my negative particles. And now, if you will, they'll be traveling down this wire. And here now, they see a split. And that's how we show the split. And on one side of the split, I have R1, and on the other side of the split of this wire, again, this is the top of this wire, it also reaches over here, and we have R2. And at the bottom end of R2, it hooks up with the bottom end of R1 with a wire, and then you can see it goes back to, if you will, the source where the positive charge is offered. So this is a redraw of this simple parallel network. Now. Let's look at, if you will, talk about voltage potential again. Because what I want to do is I want to write up some information about what we know. Well, if I have 10 volts offered to this circuit, 10 volt potential from the negative to the positive, this is just a straight wire, you can see that the voltage potential over R1 is exactly the same as the, one, as the voltage potential over R2, which means Voltage is constant. So one thing we know about parallel circuits is voltage is constant. And then let's start to show some current flow. So I'm going to show it to you this way because a lot of you are still looking at your circuits this way. The, the current, if you will, we have 10 volts of negatively charged particles that are now going to flow down the wire because we've given them a positive attraction. And negatively charged particles, that's all they, that's all they want to do in life. They just want to flow to the positive charge. So when I get here, I have some of my electrons coming through this way, and the remainder flow through this way. So it's very much like you have a fork in the road where some of your current flow is traveling this way now. And then, in this case, the remainder is going through R2, comes around, and they meet up to flow back to the source. If I show this to you on the redraw, I kind of like to use gravity to help you think, because all of us are comfortable thinking like this regarding flow. So the current flows. It leaves if you will, the electrons leave the source, and they come down this way. Some of them go this way, and then the rest go this way. They flow over the resistor here, flows over R2 to come back and add up to total current through the, the circuit. So current total depends on the current through R1 plus the current through R2. And if I had more resistors in parallel, we would continue to add up the current flow through each of these resistors to give us total current. 
Now what a lot of you are starting to look at, probably in a unique way, is resistance total in a parallel ne uh, network. Resistance total, your learning looks like this. It is what we call a reciprocal relationship, one over giving it that reciprocal relationship of one over the first resistor plus one over the second resistor for this network and if I had more resistors I would be developing the relationship this way and because I don't have enough time to explain this a little more in depth on this tape. I want you to come and see me in the Elfman Student Success Center so I can help you think this through a little better. It is, if you will, how we have to play out resistance total within a parallel circuit. And it has to do directly between the relationship of voltage and resistance within a network like this because our voltage potential stays the same over each resistor. So the, the elders within um, studying Ohm's law determined that it has a reciprocal behavior. Now what this really means, and I'm just going to try to use, if you will, a little plainer language, is this. Resistance total will be smaller than the smallest resistor in a parallel network. That's one thing you would start to notice. And I call circuits networks sometimes, so I am talking about, if you will, a parallel circuit. One more time, the resistance total within a parallel circuit the resistance total will always be smaller than the smallest resistor in that network and it has to do with this reciprocal relationship. What I want to do now is I want us to start to take on this network. And the second thing I had mentioned to you was when you're looking at, if you will, uh, any kind of circuit, it's also to your advantage to create a table, especially as they get more complex. So we're going to exercise this now and put ourselves in a position to answer any question that's posed in our class and on these worksheets. So if you remember from a series, from the series uh, table that we set up, I put voltage first, we're going to track current over each resistor and then of course resistance. And then going this way, we want to list our components. We have two resistors in this network and then we also want to keep track of the totals. And now we're nearly ready to go. Now go back to our circuit. What do we know about our circuit? Put in pen, because it's not going to change or vary, it's what was given. Put down what's given in, uh, as information to us. Uh, so that we can start to solve for the missing pieces. It tells us the total voltage. So I go to my table and I'm going to put in total voltage of 10 volts. And the other thing that's given are, if you will, the uh, total resistance, not total resistance, but the resistance over R1 as well as the resistance over R2. So resistance over R1, resistor R1 is 20 ohms. Resistance over R2, the resistor R2 is also 20 ohms and this is information that's given. And going back to what we uh, did with our series circuit, let's start to figure out the missing pieces of what I refer to many times as that three-piece puzzle. As long as you have enough information going either this way, which we don't because there's two pieces missing and we need to have at least one more piece of information if we're using Ohm's law here. And now looking vertically, we can see that there's enough information given to us with resistance to figure out total resistance. But also I want you to look at the table and look at what we're working with. What do we know? We know even more. 
as opposed to always having to pop directly into a resistive total and figuring out our resistance this way, does that table and what we know help us fill in more information? In a parallel circuit, we know voltage is constant. And that means the voltage potential of 10 volts is not only available to the whole circuit, but available to each of these resistors. So really, before I get started here, I know a little more because I'm understanding parallel circuits. I know that if there's 10 volts total offered to this little parallel network, there's got to be 10 volts of a potential offered to R1 as well as 10 volts of a potential offered to R2 because of the wiring of a parallel circuit. And with this, we have two pieces to what I call that three-piece puzzle and we can start to fill in more information. So you really have two ways you can play this out. We could have gone ahead and used, if you will, this formula right here that now is just working with, if you will, two resistors to figure out the resistance total or we can go back and figure out current flow over R1 and current flow over R2 and add that up to give us current total and have another way to come up with resistance. So the beauty of this is if you create a table and you start to manage your table correctly, you'll find out many times you have two different ways to get you to the same place. So using what we know, we went back and I said, gosh, voltage is constant. What does that mean? That must mean that the same voltage potential is offered over each of these resistors. So I put that in the table because we know this. We know that with a parallel circuit, voltage is constant. So that means that R1 will have 10 volts available to it as well as R2. Now, if we're looking at our table, we really have two ways to get to the same place. And that's what I want to talk to you about right now. I could, because I have enough information now using what I knew to start to fill in my table, I could figure out the current over R1, the current flow over R1. And I'm going to do that quickly. What is the current over R1? Well, what do we know about current? We know that current is just equal to the voltage divided by the resistance. So current over R1 is 10 volts divided by 20 volts. Let's do the math. Current over R1 is equal to 10 volts divided by 20 ohms. 10 divided by 20 is 1 half, or if you will, 0.5. And now because we're talking about current, our unit of measure is amperage. And the same is true here. 10 volts divided by 20 ohms also gives us 0.5 amps, or if you will, 5 tenths of an amp. And that's what's going through R2. And using what you know, isn't it true that current adds up over a parallel network? So what's our total amperage? Our total amperage for this circuit would be 1 amp. And because I have two pieces to the three-piece puzzle, I've avoided using, if you will, something that sometimes feels painful to use, which is the resistance total formula, this reciprocal formula. Instead, I went ahead and set myself up in the table to having, if you will, another way of figuring out resistance total. And then what we'll do is we'll use total resistance uh, formula to help us check our work because it's always good to check your work. So going back here, if I know the voltage and I know the total current, I can figure out total resistance. Voltage total divided by, oh, excuse me, the voltage divided by the current will give us resistance total. So here in this circuit, I'm just going to make an arrow over here, resistance total is going to be 10 volts divided by 1 amp. This is easy math. 10 divided by 1 is 10, and I am talking about total resistance. 
And if you remember, I had mentioned earlier that the total resistance in any parallel circuit will always be less than the smallest resistor. In this case, our resistors are exactly the same. And we figured out total resistance was 10 ohms, which is absolutely smaller than the 20. And your teacher also will show you some other shortcuts, if you will, to um, looking at a unique circuit like this where the resistance is the same. The resistance over R1 here being the, ten, uh, the 20 ohms and the resistance here being the 20 ohms. And I'm sure your teacher will talk to you about if and only if the resistance is the same in a parallel network, you could add up, and this is, I don't, these are shortcuts that I don't like to promote until you have good understanding, but you will notice in this case, I had two resistive branches, each 20, and that in our math thinking, dealing with this, will half the total resistance, which gives us 10. I'm gonna let your teacher talk to you about any of those shortcuts. I will in detail when you come see me in Elfman. But to keep it even simpler, if you're flowing this out, notice we've got all the information now. We can answer any question that's posed to us. But I always like to teach you, be a good problem solver. And good problem solvers, good, good circuit analysis people, check their work. I'm going to check my work right now. Whoa, Iris, that was too easy doing it that way. I want to find out total resistance another way. And we're going to use what we know to check our work. We know that resistance total has got to equal one over, one over each resistor. In this case, we only had two resistors. Let's see if we get 10 ohms a different way. Resistance total then would have to equal one over, one over, resistor one was 20 ohms, plus one over resistor two. Now I'm going to do the math with you. Just erasing a little bit. It looks more painful than it is. Let's just use your good thinking. I have one over, denominators are the same. Add up the numerators. Denominator stays the same. And now, when you have division of fractions, what do you remember from your basic arithmetic? You invert and you multiply. So let me take this. And you can see why if I can avoid this formula, I do. Because this can get very tedious. I'm going to invert and multiply by the numerator. So I have 1 times this inverse, which is 20 over 2. 1 times 20 over 2, what happens? Well, 20 over 2 gives us 10. 10 times 1 is 10, and you can see it checks. We just took another path to get us to where we need to go to see if indeed what we reasoned simplistically checks. And it does. It checks. It is 10 ohms. Please come to Elfman Student Success Center because most of your circuits are going to have values that might feel a little more complex. But keeping it simple and staying organized will allow you to answer any kind of question that your worksheets pose. If you were asked what's the current flow through R1, you know now that it is 5 tenths of an amp, or 0.5 amps. If they ask you for resistance total, all your information can be resourced from the table. So get organized. I think that's the biggest thing. And keep it simple so you have a good sense of what's going on.